Joining me now is Jason Trenner, Chairman of Strategist Research Partners of Baird Company. And David Bonson is with us as well. He's Chief Investment Officer at the Bonson Group. Welcome to you both. Jason, I don't mean to make you sound like such a Grinch here, but uh, just kind of putting in context <laughs> some of the earnings uh, that were. It's an odd season, better than expected, but could still get a lot worse from here. What jumps out to you so far? Well, listen, I think, uh, Kelly, as, you know, as Damon Runyon said, the, the race doesn't always go to the swift or nor the battle to the strong, but that's the way to bet. And, and from our perspective, you have to play the odds. And the odds, I would argue, favor a recession later this year. Our view is a little bit on the defensive, but I, I still think if I'm playing the odds, I want to be cautious here. Yeah, David, I, I mean, I don't know if I would say you have the same view or a similar view, but I was struck that you say, look, the Fed should pause. The more hikes they do now, the more cuts they could end up doing before the end of the year. Is that right? Well, I'm one who believes that the Fed has been exacerbating a boom bust cycle for my entire adult life. And that that's exactly what I think will happen here. I think if they over tighten, it will just simply mean that they are over easy later. And I'm really tired of that cycle. I think it's very unhelpful. I think it mostly makes uh, people more asset rich and is really very bad for our society at large. But that is what I think they'll do. I think they'll end up over tightening. They uh, won't be sad satisfied until they break something, there's no possible way they can actually believe that um, people losing jobs is a good thing and a necessary thing to deal with inflationary problems that at this point are clearly rapidly disinflating. So for them to over tighten, I just think means that they're going to end up uh, cutting rates and eventually will be heading back towards a zero bound if it were to get bad enough. Uh, that entire cycle of non-moderate monetary policy is completely unhealthy. No, I, I think that's well said, Jason. We talk a lot here about how they don't rely enough on leading indicators, on forward-looking um, sort of data points from the market. It's all just kind of rearview mirror. And Jason, I'm just one of the things that I hear so much lately is is people who are dismissive of the recession talk because they say, "Oh, this is the most telegraph recession we've ever had." Never. Well, so then we should do something about it. <laughs> we should try to stop it from happening, right? Yeah. I mean, that just means we. We've had months and months and quarters and quarters of sitting here waiting for it and saying, well, the Fed's going to keep hiking. And yeah, we're, I mean, th I wish that they would be more proactive in saying, yeah, we're a little scared when we look at the yield curve, too. Yeah, we see ISM. Yeah, we see the leading indicators. Yeah, we're worried about credit and not just going, well, unemployment and inflation. And we're just going to, you know, we'll just see where we are. Yeah, no, it's a great it's a great point. And, the, you know, the Fed is very model driven. Um, I believe it you know, has about twenty five thousand employees, a thousand PhDs. Um, so probably, you know, nothing good happens with when you got a thousand PhDs around uh, looking at these things. And the, their, from my understanding, you know, their main focus is the Phillips curve, which is just a fancy way of saying. Uh, they look a lot at the labor markets, and, and for them, that is the leading cause of inflation. And so without any sort of meaningful uh, weakness in the labor markets, uh, it's hard to expect them to ease very much or at least slow down. And in our shop, our chief economist, John Rissmuller, is of the view, for whatever it's worth, that the Fed should pause. Uh, and, and especially given the, some of the developments in the banking system, and just give it some time uh, to see. Because the, the lags in, in monetary policy are so long and they're so variable, we really don't know uh, what the impact of the Fed tightening that started a year ago is yet. Right. So, I mean, so we, we, we have a long way to go to figure out what's been done already, and uh, it wouldn't be the worst thing. I, there are other issues that are coming into play. We're going into an election year next year. Um, the, the Fed's credibility, I think, as David highlighted, I think is very much uh, in question. And so there, there are other concerns here. But I don't, I don't know if it would hurt anyone if they paused and, and, and waited to see a little bit longer what the impact of their policies have been thus far. And did you, I don't know, David, if you caught what Janet Yellen said over the weekend, but it, it was a little interesting because she, she sort of said that all of the bank problems amounted to the kind of tightening the Fed is trying to accomplish anyway. And, you know, we, it's not the kind of language we're really hearing from Powell, at least that explicitly. Um, you know, she, I, she of all people is going to be very careful in making any comments like that. And I wondered if it was meant to be a little bit of a hint about like, you know, hey, maybe it's OK to take a pause here. Well, I certainly took it that way. And I've seen other uh, comments from guys like Larry Summers that I think are, are influential in that orbit of uh, Ph.D. holding conversations. And yet at the end of the day, 
I question whether or not they're as ideologically Phillips curve oriented as Jason and I suspect they are, or it's um, cover for the fact that at the end of the day, they uh, go until they break something. And that when in 2018, going into 19, when Powell capitulated, there was no change in labor markets. It was purely a matter that credit markets revolted and credit markets have not revolted this time. It's one of the reasons recession calls right now are not as easy as we want to make them out to be. I respect the way Jason worded it, that there's odds that he thinks the odds are in favor of it. But that could be 51 percent for all, all we then know. Why do you think they'll uh, be cutting, may- David, just because you think inflation's going to recede quickly? I think because it has receded quickly, and if they were looking at an annualized inflation rate over the last six months, instead of still looking at the base effect from a year earlier, I think, and still looking at this obviously antiquated shelter number within CPI, I think they have a two-handle on headline inflation now, and that where there is lumpiness as food and energy go up and down, that nobody in the right mind thinks that's a monetary inflation. And so the Fed already doesn't have an inflationary reason to do so. And the tightening, this is where, I don't say this very often, this is where Secretary Yellen and I agree. Mm -hmm. The banking system did a lot of the tightening for them. You've had hundreds of billions of dollars leave the deposit base to go chase yield and money market. And that extracts from the lending base of the banking system. And that is disinflationary and it is stagnatory. And that's really what the Fed is supposed to be keeping their eye on, not waiting to respond right. to a higher unemployment number. No, it's listen, we have to leave it there. But the uh, the added wrinkle is if Jason's right and many others who are bullish on energy right now uh, and what that would do to the infl- inflation picture. We won't we won't get into that here. We'll leave it and we'll welcome you both back shortly. Da- Jason Trenner, David Bonson, appreciate your thoughts here on the Fed and the markets.